Stripe Stress Factory. The very, very... Uh, she, she may have the biggest boobs. I don't know. We're going to rodeo box later. Give it up for the lovely Lee Arlen, folks. Yeah, Mike, Mad Dog Mike. It's here again for Mike, Mad Dog Mike. I'm sorry, the only thing that I'm packing tonight are my boobs. No snacks in here. Or are they? Okay, I, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming here tonight for your entertainment and not going to Great Adventure for the Pat Penatar, Neil Giraldo show. Yes. I know, they are very entertaining, but they're not one bit funny. Right? Right? Right. 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 That's right. They try, but they fail every time. So, okay, and um, uh, before I uh, go any further, I have to uh, start off by, by saying, and because people uh, already know that he's here, uh, there's a very special person in the audience, and, and, I, and, and I understand that when... Um, there's an elephant in the room, you have to address it. So here's my elephant, it's my boyfriend, Carl. <laughs> when the sex jokes come up and there are sex jokes, you can all stare at him and go, is that true? <laughs> he, it, it's okay, because he actually wanted me to write jokes about him. And I was like, what are you, crazy? You do know that I generally don't say very nice things about people. And when I talk about boyfriends, it's almost always in the past tense. Yeah, and I, I, he's nice. I want to keep him for a while, so so we'll, we'll be we'll be cool. We'll be cool. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, once again, I have to thank uh, John and Sue for having us here tonight. This is one of the best record stores. I think not just in New Jersey, but did I say in the country? It is. It is. Yes. It is. yes. yes. Absolute, absolutely. Absolutely. Fucking my friend. Because John knows a lot about music, and you, any question you have about music, he will tell you. You, you. Something they're playing over the PA when you're shopping. It's like, oh yeah, that was written in 1970, and this by, and the guy that played bass on it is like, I didn't even want to know that, but okay. <laughs> I just came for a CD. But I guarantee you, you'll find something that you want here, or maybe several somethings, because every time I come here, I find something that I want, and then some, and I spend way too much money, so you do that too, okay? Because um, they have to pay for John's birthday present. Are you enjoying it? Because yes. you're sitting on it. Yes. It's the chairs. They got brand new chairs. Are they great? Uh, before I continue, I want to uh, just warn you, um, if one of the staff tries to invite you into the back to see the expansion, um, they are talking about how they're making this floor bigger. He's <laughs> just saving you a little trouble so you don't get your hopes up. I did. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but, uh, the, it's a great summer, right? It's almost over, though. Yeah. Anybody go on any cool vacations? Woodstock. Sure. <laughs> oh, Woodstock. You're still there. <laughs> In your mind. And that's okay. I, I had a nice vacation. I went to Vegas. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what they say about Vegas. <laughs> what happens there goes on Facebook. Um, well, that's what it's for. Um, I I gotta give my, I gotta give Carl credit. He goes on Facebook for 15 minutes every day, and that's it. Very disciplined. I will go on there and stay on there literally for days. In fact, did anybody see the Facebook movie? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't tear myself away from Facebook long enough to go see the Facebook movie. <laughs> So I'm waiting for it, for it to come on Facebook. <laughs> but I understand they're going to have an app for that, so. Yeah. But like I said, it's great to be out. It's great to be out of the house. Uh, I personally don't have a husband and kids I'm trying to get away from. And I'm ecstatic to be out of the house, but uh, that's because I have the smother. Yeah. 
the smothered. Yes, every time I go out, it's, where are you going? When are you coming back? <laughs> These ropes are too tight. <laughs> I'm kidding, mom's not tied up. She's handcuffed. Oh, come on, who doesn't like to be handcuffed every now and then? Mad dog? Yeah, say I knew that. Actually, mom and I get along pretty good, all things considered, except that time I got my 12th tattoo. It's right here. It says, must be 18 to enter, 21 to drink. Kids eat free. Um, yes, it's that kind of show. You are warned. No excuses. Right away, she gets all pissy on me and she says, Now you can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery. And I'm like, Ma, we're not Jewish. <laughs> And plus, I don't even care what they do with me after I'm gone. No, wait, that's not really true. I, I've actually been giving it a lot of thought. And I want to be cremated and have my ashes rubbed into George Clooney. <laughs> yeah. Or Hugh Jackman. Oh, yeah. Or Matthew McConaughey. Hey, hey. <laughs> actually, the list is quite long. So I'll spare you the trouble. I'll put it up on Facebook. You'll see it later. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, there's that. You know, uh, I like being a comic. It's a great job. It's a wonderful job. Um, it's actually way better than all the other shitty jobs I've had. Um, I, I, well, I found out I can't keep a regular job. They keep asking me to leave. <laughs> well, there's these weird rules about showing up on time and doing work. <laughs> you mean I can't get paid anyway? No? Okay. Uh, but I did have this one job that what wasn't too bad. Um, it was a taste tester. And all I had to do was um, put this flavored water in my mouth, swish it around, and spit it out. But my mother always told me that it was impolite to spit. And that's why I'm very popular. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, we get to travel being comics, which is awesome. Uh, means staying in lots of hotels, which is great for me because I'm used to waking up in strange beds. That's how I made them. Um, and not too long ago, I was up in Boston for the comedy festival there. Yes, you can applaud that. You really don't applaud that. Yeah. I was invited, <laughs> but I went anyway. <laughs> sort of like my ex-boyfriend's wedding. I wasn't invited, but I went anyway. I thought that restraining order had expired. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> but it was just as well. Things didn't work out. We weren't right for each other. He was a lot older than me. 23 years older. I know, ew, right? Yeah. Every time I eat raisins, I think of him. <laughs> raisins is my dog. Um. <laughs> oh, stop. I don't have to guess. Just him. <laughs> but um, uh, when, you're, when you're on the road and you're traveling, you get, a lot of, you get a lot of cool perks and stuff, you know, like you said, you get to hotels. But, but the one thing that's really, really bad, because you have to watch a lot of TV on the road, and it's not like at home. At home, you've got, you've got the dish, you've got the satellite, you've got the cable, you've got on demand. When you're on the road, you can demand all you want to. You're only going to get what they have. But I guarantee you, one of those channels is going to have my favorite trashy show, Inside Edition. Oh, I love that show. I like to call it Geraldo Light. Twice the sleaze in half the time. I'm watching it this one day, and uh, there's a story on there about this woman. She's married and having a baby. Big deal, right? Happens all the time, right? Well, for this woman, it was a big deal because she had half a body. I know. I was like, what? <laughs> so I kept watching. From here to here, she was perfectly normal in every way. After that, nothing. And she was married and having a baby. People, I have my lower appendages 
it took me forever to find this guy and this bitch is married and having a baby? <laughs> and they're all like, oh, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it inspiring? I'm like, no. <laughs> you people are only showing us normal people this door to make us feel like shit. <laughs> and it worked. I watched two hours of Jerry Springer, an hour of Maury, a DVD box set of Flavor Flav, just to feel superior again. And I don't know why I was getting so upset. I don't even like kids. In fact, I think I can safely go out on a reproductive limb here and admit to you all, since we're so close, and we're literally so close, um, that I hate kids. There, I said it. I hate fucking kids. Um, oh, wait. Um, ooh. That's wrong. Wait, strike that. Reverse it. Um, it should be, I hate, I, I fucking hate kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, because the other thing is clearly illegal. Unless, of course, you're a member of the clergy or Michael Jackson. God, rest his soul. Never proven. Never proven. <sighs> no, no, I'm just, I, I don't want to do any of that stuff. I mean, you know, for me to get married, it's going to have to be a shotgun wedding with the gun aimed at my head and my finger on the trigger. Sorry, honey. Um, and, and then that's okay, because I found out I, I couldn't get a wedding dress anyway. You know, they don't make a color darker than black. And a lot of people say, oh, you're just afraid of commitment. You're just afraid of commitment. It's like, no. I'm obsessive compulsive. We commit to everything. Over and over and over. I'm just afraid of the questions. That's why, you know, it's like, you, I've literally taken us out of the closet here tonight. I mean, our families don't know shit. Because <laughs> we don't want to hear the, just, what's your relationship for more than like five minutes? Am I right? People want to know right away. When's the wedding? When's the wedding? It's like, I'm on to you fuckers. <laughs> They're only asking because they want a party. Excuse me, but why should my life be ruined just because you want to get smashed and have cake? Uh, <laughs> and, and plus, you know, it's like, look, look dudes. This wedding shit has gotten way out of hand. And my, oh, come on, really. This this is August. We should be like almost through with the wedding season. It used to be from June to September, right? Now it's all freaking year. It used to be Brides Magazine, and that was it. That's where you got all your information from. Now we've got the internet. We've got the TV shows. It's like say yes to the dress, no to the sex. You know. It's, it's like, oh, we have to we have to be celibate until the wedding night. What? <laughs> The bride gets to consult 50 different people before she makes one decision. Groom, they don't say nothing to him. Uh, we don't need you till the day of the thing. Go away, you know. <laughs> don't I even get to pick out my tux? Oh, you're not wearing a tux. You're wearing a clown suit. This is a theme wedding, okay? You need to shut up and like it. Yeah, that's the other thing. You get theme weddings. So it's like all year round, there's something else going on. It's like, it's like, oh, Christmas is coming. We can have a, we have a witcher wedding, a Christmas wedding. Oh my God, we're having red velvet cake so the girls can wear red velvet. And, and, and their fur trim. Oh my God, and there's a swirling gowns and everything. Oh my God, it'll be so beautiful. And then little muffs on their hands. And it's, you know what? You invite me to one of the more of these fucking theme weddings, I'm going to punch you in your muff. <laughs> Oh my God, I was at this one. It was a Quaker, Jewish black wedding. Quaker on one side, Jewish and black on the other. One side wasn't allowed to speak, the other side couldn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then there was the one up in Maine. They don't live there. They're just really big fans of Stephen King. So instead of rice, we threw pig's blood. And yelled, they're all gonna laugh at you and your dirty pillows. <laughs> oh god. And Alice Paul, I got another one. Oh my god. 
I don't know why, you know, my friends, my friends invite me to this bullshit because I guess they realize that I too like to get smashed in a cake. So, um, <laughs> so this fall I got this thing. It's not even a real wedding. It's a hand fast thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's a renaissance thing. So everybody's in a mean costume, including the fairy godmother or whatever she is that's marrying them. And um, so they said, the guests can, can, guests can dress up too. So I figured, okay, I'll go with this. And uh, I'm going to be uh, going as a serving wench because I figure, unlike the traditional bridesmaids gear, I can wear that again. Because <laughs> if this comedy thing doesn't work out, I can always get a job slinging drinks at a Renaissance fair or something. You know, <laughs> I'll already have the costume. It's like, yeah, I'm already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, th so that whole that whole scene is not for me. I'm not domestic. He'll tell you. I don't cook. I don't clean. I don't birth no babies. But I am, however, excellent at sleeping on the couch and giving blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> right, Annie? <laughs> so I like to nap and give head. That makes me a lazy slut. I really don't care. Everybody's got to be good at something, right? My dear departed father once told me, find something you enjoy doing and get really good at it. I think he was talking about the comedy. But you go with your strengths. <laughs> so I, I and actually I really don't like calling them low jobs because it makes it sound too much like work. <laughs> but I do think I should be allowed to put it on my resume because it is the longest position I've ever had. So, uh, yeah, so I, it, it was good that I found him because I was really getting desperate. Um, I, I, so desperate I was starting to think about switching teams. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I probably could have done it. I mean, I did go down on a girl once. Once. And I went to a county college, okay? Um, it wasn't bad. It tasted like chicken. Of the sea. Um, <laughs> But I could, but I decided now I can't give up men. I love men. I love all men. I love gay men, straight men, drag queens. I love them all. And uh, you gotta find a guy that's nice. This guy is very nice. Uh, I, I did have a guy that was too nice though once. Uh, there, that is possible. Some people think, oh, how could somebody be too nice? Well, this guy was too nice. So every time he paid for something, I felt like I was picking his pocket. Every time we had sex, I felt like I was raping him. Okay, I was, but. Um, <laughs> But um, you know, I, and you know, also you don't want you don't want somebody that's going to make you give up your dream because a lot of times you know husbands, wives, whatever you know, of comedians they they say, oh, when do you have to go out every night? Can't we do something together? It's like, yeah, we can do something together. I'll be on stage and come to my fucking show, bitch. You know, <laughs> there we did something together. But no, you you want somebody that uh, doesn't make you give up your dream. So oh, everybody remember that's very important. Um, because I like doing this. This stuff is great. I found out that if people like you, they give you shit. Um, like my friend Ken tells a lot of jokes uh, during his act about getting drunk. And during his show, people are sending drinks up to the stage. My friend Ron tells these elaborate stories about getting high. And after the show, he's out in the parking lot with audience members, toking it up. I did mention I'm really good at blowjobs. <laughs> 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 Just, 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 she's pointing at her man. I'll give you a lesson later, honey, okay? <laughs> but um, I, I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, everybody wants to be in love for, well, everybody. For most people, I would think. I want to be in love. You want to be in love? Cindy wants to be in love? Don't you, Cindy? Hell yeah, she said. And uh, you want to be in love forever for at least as long as you have the room? <laughs> I know you. Well, me, I, I, I want to be in love, of course. You know, it's like, I hate to say my hair. I'm the first one to say that. <laughs> but I'm more like Meg Ryan in Sleepless in Seattle. I don't just want to be in love. I want to be in love in a movie. 
but my favorite movies are the producers in Animal House. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, it, it, so it ends up being like, they all come here. How do they find me? Yeah, fucked up. You yeah, trusted us. Well, I trust you guys have been enjoying your evening. Yeah. I know I have had a ball. I'm gonna have two balls later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be. I'm waiting. We're gonna be Matt. Uh, bring Mad Dog back up here to bring you up uh, your last act. Thank you so much for coming to see us. Thank you. Keep the love going for me, Arlis Road. Where, where is Carl? Oh. He, Carl's got the greatest girlfriend in the world. I am jealous. Couches, DJs, and no marriage. I need to pull that off. Alrighty, we're gonna keep rocking. We got your headliner next. You guys ready for your headliner comic? Yeah. Come on. Oh, they keep getting better. We got all headliners tonight. Keep the love going for this gentleman. He's played Levin Live. He's played Dangerfields. You can see him next Friday at the very world-famous Dublin House in Red Bank. Very historical. This guy has been given the nickname the Soul Damager on the comedy circuit. But I assure you, he's a really nice guy and a good friend. Give it up for Mr. John Hollywood. Show him some love. <laughs> that was great. What a great crowd. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they call me the soul damager. I got that. Uh, I told a joke. And uh, you gotta hear it out. Gotta let it play out because it could hurt you if you don't. Okay? The joke goes like this. Jerry Sandusky did some terrible things with some 8 and 10 year old boys. But you think they would have gave him more of a pass if he was fooling around with 13-year-old girls? Because let's face it, folks, 13-year-old pussy's pretty good. That's where the lady freaked out. She, <laughs> she didn't let me finish. The rest of the joke goes, remember when you were 13? Has it gotten any better since? No! That's the joke. But she said, you're fucked up! And she ran out of the room. And I said, lady, it's a joke, it's not an editorial. <laughs> and when I went out to console her to make sure she was okay, she says, I'm crying inside. I think you damaged my soul. <laughs> and then she went home and called the police. <laughs> she honestly did, she went and called the police. She called Belleville Bloomfield Police Station, she said, there is a pedophile on stage in pianos. <laughs> and they said, is he currently molesting a child? They're like, no. They said, well, we can't do anything until he does. She says, well, mark my words, he will. <laughs> that is how I damage the soul. That's right. My name is Johnny Hollywood, right? A lot of you probably think that sounds like a porno name. It's not. People always ask me, is that your real name? And I said, no, my, my real name is Jonathan Hollywood. <laughs> but if I was going to have a porno name, I'd have a great porno name. I'd have a fantastic porno name, like Rod Long. <laughs> eh, that's not Big Fella, right? <laughs> Alex Beaver. They love him at parties. He's a, you know, eating cunts with a Z. I want to keep it clean. <laughs> but the greatest porno name ever, ever, has got to be Michael Bloomberg. He is fucking everyone in New York. <laughs> I'm a little depressed, a little bit. My parents are moving to Las Vegas. They've lived in that same house I grew up in. They've been there for 39 years. And my mom and dad... I don't know, they've never come see me perform. And now they may never get to see me perform. And, uh, and that bothers me a little bit. Actually, what bothers me more is, my mom is embarrassed that I'm a comedian. That's why she hasn't come see me. She's embarrassed. She tells all her friends when they ask, how's John doing? She says, well, he's doing all right. Well, what's he doing? Well, he's an adult entertainer. <laughs> because I use adult language and tell adult stories 
my mother sees that as being an adult entertainer. And I had to explain to my mom, Mom, that's a sex worker. That's a porn star. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe it's the name. <laughs> She's a pisser, my mom. I love her. She's a Protestant lady. She's all... Anyhow. She's going to Vegas, so maybe I'll get to do some shows in Vegas. That'll be fun. And uh, I, I heard some whispering before. Heard some people came up to me, had to tell me I look like John Malkovich. Yeah. Let me tell you, folks, I am painfully, painfully aware of the fact that I look like John Malkovich. It sucks! It sucks for three reasons. The first reason, he only plays freaks, weirdos, and assassins. Have you seen Con Air? Right? In the line of fire, red? Okay? He has never played a romantic role in his life. The closest thing he ever came to play a romantic role is Dangerous Liaisons. What an asshole! And the third reason, nobody wants to fuck John Malkovich! If a girl walks up to you and says, you look like Brad Pitt, you're getting laid. If she says, you look like Johnny Depp, you're getting laid. You know what? If she says, you look like Ellen DeGeneres, chances are you're getting laid. But not John Malkovich. <laughs> Not me. If I want to get laid, I gotta be funny. I gotta make the ladies laugh. Ah. So after the show, girls, don't come up to me and tell me I look like John Malkovich. Tell me I'm funny. You can talk about that in the parking lot. That's right. And if we do something and it takes less than 15 minutes, you got a boyfriend, that's not cheating. And I assure you, it'll take less than 15 minutes. <laughs> and if we do something you don't normally do with your boyfriend, that's not cheating either. And if you don't have an orgasm, it's definitely not cheating. And I assure you, <laughs> you will not be satisfied. <laughs> hey, when you look, I'm the kind of a guy a girl's got to get to know first, you know? No woman has ever walked into a room, took one look at me, and said, Oh, i got to get a piece of that. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Never happens. That's why I internet date. I saw Kelly. She's internet dating too. It's good. But you, if you internet date though, you gotta be careful. You gotta be very careful because there are strange codes in internet dating ads that if you're not aware of them, will fuck you up. Yeah, like SWF. We all know that single white female. Simple. But they also have DWFWK. You know what that is? Divorced white female with kids. They also have BBW. That stands for Big Beautiful Woman. I, I got that wrong a couple of times. <laughs> you girls crack me up. You put stuff in there, it's like all code, you know? You know, if the, if the girl's ad says she's frisky and fun-loving, that means she's a pain in the ass. <laughs> if she says she's disease and drug-free, oh, that's the life of the party there, you know? And if she says she's a social drinker, she's really looking for a designated driver. <laughs> girls, man, you're funny. You, oh, you know what's really funny about the, all the girls' ads? They all talk about the eyes. Every single ad, a girl put all of them talk about the eyes. Big brown eyes, deep green eyes, beautiful blue. We don't give a shit about your eyes. You can have no eyes and we'd still fuck you. <laughs> You know what? Whoever said the eyes are the windows to the soul was a chick. You know how I know that? Because I'm a dude and the only window I care about is on the first floor with the pink curtains. My window. Holy jeez. You say other stuff in here too that's really, it's hysterical. You all say you like long walks on the beach. That's code for I gotta take you on vacation. You say you like fine dining. That's code for I gotta take you to an expensive restaurant. Ladies, it's real simple. No eyed, big boob, nymphomaniac with no gag reflex looking for a man. <laughs> That'll put something in your inbox. <laughs> and fellas, we gotta do better. Because I looked at the guys' ads when I was making up mine, and seriously, ladies, we all don't own Porsches and yachts. And you know what, guys? How much information is the girl supposed to get when your pictures are only from here to here? What are you showing her? You're sensitive? Fellas, it's simple. Financially secure gentleman looking for a woman with big, beautiful eyes. That'll get your foot in the door. 
And by foot, I mean penis. By door, I mean inbox. Crack me up. <laughs> Women are funny, man. You guys do silly things. You're like, you, I, who went on a diet this year to fit into a bathing suit? Just the girl I was seeing. <laughs> Let me tell you, man, you girls do some crazy stuff. This girl I was dating, we're not dating anymore, but she was using these diet meals that she had from her New Year's resolution. Hey, Medifast, you know that stuff? Yeah, they packets of foil pouches and stuff. But they have expiration dates on there for a reason. Now, she opened up the boxes she had gotten at Christmas time, and she got through the first couple of packs, everything was really cool. She opens up the next box, and she finds bug carcasses in the bottom of the box. <laughs> yeah, in fact, one of them little suckers tunnels his way out of the bag. Uh -huh. She starts freaking out. She's like, oh my God, I'm eating bugs. Oh no. And I'm like, what's the matter? She's like, I'm eating bugs. I'm like, you eat Chinese food. You don't even know what's in that. She goes, I know it's not bugs. And she kept complaining and she got on my nerves and I got mad and I said, wait a minute. You take my penis in your mouth and you're complaining about eating bugs? Let me tell you something, folks. If I was on Fear Factor and I had the cock or cockroach challenge, I'm picking the bugs. Because it only takes one. Man, that's crazy. Usually I do shows with a lot of young fellas. So I have to turn this around a little bit. And uh, something I recently learned, and I, I didn't know. And... Uh, it was a rough lesson, and that is, I didn't want to hook up with a girl I meet in a, you know, that I met in a club. Yeah, I thought I did. I really did. But then a, a girl had to explain to me, you know. And, and here's why. The young ladies that I was checking out, they had those jeans on since 6 o'clock that night. Maybe they had White Castles for lunch. She's, you know, maybe they've had nine beers. They've been to the ladies' room four times. There's no paper in the ladies' room. Yeah, she's been dancing and sweating. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. You get what I'm saying, guys? Head and shoulders. I didn't know that. Girl had to tell me that recently. She says, no, I don't feel pretty. That's code for my vagina is a mess. <laughs> and then she got mad at me. She goes, don't you think of me like I'm thinking of you? And I'm like, no. That's why balls stink. Because <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> oh, my God. See, you deal with young guys in the room, that's really good, because I can give them advice, you know, advice like my dad gave me when I was 11 years old. He gave me the best advice a guy can give, and that is, never stick your finger where you wouldn't put your tongue. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? That goes for your whole life. I was 11 years old playing with a fan. <laughs> and now I'm older, and I still like to play with fans. <laughs> Except I won't get my fingers chopped off. Oh, God, that's, that's crazy stuff. What else, what else can I do with an age-appropriate room? Hmm. Anybody shop at Costco around here? Look, I hate Costco. I hate Costco. Anybody watch TV? TV's good. Yeah. I watch, you know, get, doing comedy, you, you get really crazy hours, you know? You get out of here late, you get home. You still got to do all the stuff everyone else does, right? But I like to rest first. I watch TV. I watch Discovery Channel. I watch TLC. They have a show on the Discovery Channel. It's about the Human Genome Project. Does anybody know what that is? Human Genome Project? Human Genome Project is a group of scientists that are breaking down human DNA. And they're figuring out what makes people what we are. You know? All the little quirks. You know? Like people who go to comedy shows and not laugh. They're figuring out what that's about. And, and they made a startling discovery, something that affects me. And that discovery is that within the next seven generations, there will be no more redheads and blondes. We'll be, yeah, that's right. We'll be extinct. You're looking at an endangered species right here, ladies and gentlemen. But don't get upset. Don't get too worried about it, because as long as Miss Claro sticks around, so those Puerto Rican girls are going to keep that dream alive. <laughs> and I know that for a fact. Because I was driving down Main Street and I saw this girl waiting for a bus. And she had bright yellow hair. And she had bright yellow fingernails and bright yellow toenails to match. All right? And she was wearing a red jumper. 
And I only really mention her toenails because she was wearing open-toed shoes that were a little too small. And they looked like a bird on a perch. And for a second, I thought I might have been looking at a giant parrot. But she jumped off the bench and got on a bus. And that doesn't happen with parrots. They also made the discovery that within the next 20 generations, there will be no more black people, no more white people, no more Asians. Just an entire planet full of tan people. And we'll be that much closer to realizing Martin Luther King's dream of a colorblind society. Where a little tan boy and a little tan girl can hold hands together and grow up. And the little tan girl can be on 16 and pregnant and not be judged. And the little tan boy can be on the Maury show and not be the baby daddy. I have a dream. Yes. <laughs> Applause break. That's for that. I got to experience that colorblind dream at Costco. I fucking hate Costco. You, you've been there. I, my rage starts to build when I pull into the parking lot at Costco. I there are no laws in the Costco parking lot. You know, you, and you can never get a car when you need one, because the car boy's job is the most dangerous job in America. There ought to be a TV show for that. Those car boys would rather be fishing for crab off the coast of Alaska than gathering the carts in a Costco parking lot. So what happens is, when I go into this store, I gotta follow somebody out to get their cart. Yeah, that's right, me, creepy looking comedian, following another man out to his car. <laughs> Works beautifully. Follow this guy out, he said, I said, pal, let me take that card off your hands. He goes, give me ten bucks. <laughs> what an asshole! I go, how about I fight you for it? He goes, take the card. <laughs> then I realized everyone who shops at Costco is an asshole. I shop at Costco. I'm an asshole. Because I spend 150 bucks a year for a membership and they don't even bag my shit. I hate that place. Finally get my cart and I go in the store. Fill up my cart with cat litter and cat food and dog food because I got five cats and six dogs. I'm an asshole, like I said. And I come around a corner and I nearly killed a child. Not because I don't like kids. I love kids. But this kid was riding on the front of his mother's cart like cheap fucking Pontiac. <laughs> like the hood ornament and on a Bentley. He's he, he, like the FTD guy. He's like, oh! He comes around the corner, and I don't see him because the mom cut the corner tight, and I nearly crushed him. And the mom starts freaking.